Hello, hello, amazing business owners, one of the awesome group members in my Facebook group in the community has asked that I go through her about page and I wanted to get that done for her. She wanted to make some updates today. If you would like me to go through your about page, I make no promises because it depends on my calendar and my schedule. And I do have a launch starting this week, but I would be happy to at least give you some feedback. So if you're not in the community, come check it out at www.businessstraightup.com slash community. And Deanna actually watched my About Pages Masterclass, which was recorded forever ago. I might need to update that, but it's still relevant. So if you want to take that About Page Masterclass, check it out at businessstraightup.com slash about pages. And um, she did say that she is fine with a public review. So here we go. This is Deanna's website. I apologize, Deanna. I don't know how to pronounce your last name. I would say Wyrick. Um, but I am not going to do a full website review. We're just going to do the about page. And what I want to say first is that I did not go through the entire website, but I really like the layout that I see here. It's very easy. It's very intuitive. I know where to click. Very simple. I love the bar at the top. So if you have read any of my past articles, you know how important that call to action is. It is a scientific thing. Yes, people know what to do, but being told what to do matters, which sounds so silly, but it's very, very, very true. So I love this bar at the top. It is for a contact. Um, and Deanna, if you are attending my email class tomorrow, you will know that we might want to change that to an email often, but I do love that you even have it there because it is a call to action. So as we scroll down, I love that Deanna has a photo of herself here. Sometimes I see family pictures in an about page and there's nothing wrong with using a family photo. However, it then kind of forces the user to say, okay, which one is Deanna? Like, especially if you have older kids, that can be hard. Or if maybe there are multiple adults in that photo, that can be difficult too. So consider having an individual photo on your about page. And I'm also a very, very big fan of having a professional photo on your about page, not an iPhone selfie. Now, I have several pictures of myself on my about page. Some are selfies, some are professional, and that's a good mix. And But if you're only going to put one photo, please make sure it's a professional photo, good lighting where someone can see your face. Deanna is a birth photographer. And quite frankly, if I'm going to be in that like vulnerable state of giving birth, I want to see who's going to be in that room with me. So I feel like this would be extremely important for specific genres of photography, especially. Um, I am primarily a boudoir photographer. And so I, again, that's a vulnerable state to be in. And I want to see the person who is going to see me naked, basically. <laughs> so that picture is super, super important. Um, I, I don't love the leaf border. However, that might be something that is consistent that I just didn't see on the rest of the website. So um, I don't hate it. I just don't love it. But it could be something that's consistent with branding. So without going through the whole website, I'm not entirely sure about that. Something to think about, Deanna. So um, for anyone that has not seen my about page formula before, it is the kick-ass about page formula. And I have an article, I will link it in the comments below. But here's the basic equation in this formula, okay? And if you hate math, just let it go for a sec, because it's basically a really important equation to have on your about page. First is your ideal client's concerns and understanding with an introduction and why, with a call to action, and hopefully that will generate an inquiry and a booked client. Um, so basically what that means is concerns and understanding. You need to know your ideal client's concerns and demonstrate that you understand those concerns. Second, an introduction, who the heck are you <laughs> and why do you do what you do? And then a call to action, book me, work with me, connect with me, whatever it is. But um, those three things need to be in place. So. Um, let's see. It says for me, it all started when my daughter was to have a cesarean birth and made a comment that no one would ever want to see those pictures. 
in that moment, I thought, yes, they would. And from then on, I just wanted to take pictures of babies being born. Um, I, I don't dislike that statement, but I feel like we need to actually switch it up a little bit. So Deanna also has more pictures here, which I like, um, especially since she started with the individual photo of her. So now when I look at these family photos, I can pick out who she is. I can see exactly who she is and I'm not wondering who that is. Um, I like the quote. Uh, I think that that is a nice addition and it kind of breaks up the page as well. Um, my love for photography started when I was 10 years old. So I know that this is going to have a lot of people arguing with me and maybe some hate mail. I don't think that any clients really care about that. Um, <laughs> I know that it's something that we want to show that we've loved photography forever. I remember my first camera, but in the end, is it going to help someone book you? Probably not. Um, I personally actually have three about pages. The first one has the about page formula. And then there's this little link at the bottom that says if you want to read more. And then I know someone's really invested if they want to click on the second one. And that's where I share a little bit more of this. And I'm not saying you need more than one about page. I just don't think that this information right here is super relevant to your clients and why they would want to book you. Um, same with this. And again, I'm not saying it's not important, but it should probably be maybe at the very bottom of the page and you need to put, um, the concerns and understanding up here first. So maybe something like, and I'm totally making this up, Deanna, like just off the cuff here. So hi, I'm Deanna. And if you're looking for a birth photographer and you found my website, chances are that you want to make sure that you capture um, images of your baby coming into this world. That might be a C-section. It might be a VBAC. It might. There's so many different options and there's so many different ways that babies can come into this world. But either way, you know that it's an event that you want to remember. Maybe it's your first child. Maybe it's your last child. And you know that this is the last time that you're going to ever experience the emotions that come with the first time you see your baby. Think of these things. You want to get inside your ideal client's head and basically talk to them and say, look, I get it. This is what you're probably worried about. This is what you're probably thinking about right now because you want them to read this and go, oh my gosh, it's like you're in my head. <laughs> you want them to think that you're talking directly to them, that you can read their mind. So first kind of break down the concerns and understanding and talk about them. Talk about the things that they might be worried about, the things that they're thinking about. Um, so in your case for birth photographer, maybe someone is worried about having those pictures of them when they don't look so hot because they're working their butts up. Um, you know, you might want to address that. And all of these concerns and things that you want to talk about come from the questions from your ideal clients. When you have that client who is just amazing and you're like, uh, if I could work with this person every day, my soul would be so full of love and joy. Um, think of the questions that they asked you. Now, if you had a huge pain in the ass client, maybe those are not questions you want to include because you don't want to encourage those pain in the ass clients to book you again. But if you, when you have those ideal clients, talk to them specifically and say, maybe you're worried about this. Maybe you're thinking about this. Uh, or, you know, in the end, maybe this is your last child and you really want the birth to go a certain way and you're worried that it won't. You know, get inside the head of your ideal clients, especially I think with pregnant women, because they are definitely thinking about this birth for sure. And then demonstrate that you understand it. And that could be something based on your story. Maybe um, what I see right here, I didn't have any pictures of my first baby being born and I've always regretted that. I was too shy or thought it was a private matter. Um, but they are for you. So maybe this is part of your story that you can actually include into that concerns and understanding. So I would put concerns first and then understanding something like this. 
and then introduce yourself and talk about why someone should hire you. Because quite frankly, I don't think that when someone is hiring a birth photographer, that they'll really care about your first camera. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. Just straight up. I don't think that that is on the top of their priority list. (laughs) So you might want to say I'm a mom. I've had my babies and I understand that giving birth is one of the most empowering and difficult experiences that any woman can go through. Think of the things that you can say that will demonstrate understanding for what you've already said when it comes to your client's concerns. And then introduce, I'm sorry, that is part of your introduction. Talk about your why. Why do you do this? Which again is part of this I, I really regret not having those photos and I want to make sure that every mom has these pictures to look back on because my babies are, and I'm just guessing from this photo, my babies are grown or teenagers and it is so hard to believe that they were ever that size. <laughs> I have a 14 year old too, Deanna, so I get it. Like it's so hard to believe that one time I held them in my arms because he's as tall as I am now. So talk about those things. Talk about in your introduction and why, why you love to do what you do and not when you first started photography, not your first camera. And then at the bottom, like these are cool. The rewards are fun and I'm not saying that they don't matter, but Before that, after the bottom, you want the call to action. So put a button, put a link, even link something like this. Say, connect with me and see if I'm available during the month that you're due. Because birth is kind of a hairy thing with scheduling too, I totally know. And you could even put the call to action underneath the concerns and understanding. Because if you are able to articulate that very, very well, then someone may not even want to read more. They're like, okay, I'm done. I'm in. Let me click on it. So I would even dare to say maybe two calls to action, one underneath concerns and understanding, one underneath introduction and why saying connect with me to see if your month is available or I'm not sure how birth photographers book, but, um, that is something that could be super important. If someone is totally on board, don't make them scroll further. (laughs) Let them uh, contact you as soon as possible. Um, Kind of a, just a quick feedback right here. The little dot, dot, dots, like I'm a big fan of dot, dot, dots, but on your about page, it kind of throws me off a little bit. So I'd probably get rid of that too, but that's just a tiny grammatical thing. So I hope that this has helped. Um, And Deanna, thank you so much for being willing to put yourself out there publicly. Um, I'll probably share this with some of my birth photographer friends as well, because it is something that is um, so important to have this information and to know what is your message? Who are you talking to? Who's your ideal client? And I know with birth photographers, like I've actually, I had a birth photographer when I had my daughter four years ago, holy moly, four years. Um, Jennifer Mason is absolutely amazing. And I talked with her specifically about like, who is your ideal client? Cause I'm giving birth in a hospital and not everyone does. Some people do the at home births and that's who they want to speak with. So if someone wanted to focus on home births, maybe you would say when you're speaking to your client's concerns and understanding, maybe you would say, um, you're worried about people judging you or thinking that you're making the wrong decision. Think of the things that someone who is having a specific type of birth may be concerned about. And this kind of goes back to that ideal client profile type thing. So um, it is important to really know your ideal client, but think of the things that you really want to talk about in your message. And when your message is very, very clear, it becomes very easy to put on all the pages of your website, but especially your about page. So it is so important to actually talk to your ideal clients about their concerns, their understanding, not just about you. So again, if you want to watch that about pages master class, it is at businessstraightup.com slash about pages. And I will actually link the kick-ass about page formula because that's an article on my website. So I will link it in the comments below. Thank you so much, Deanna. If anyone has any questions, the Facebook group is at business straight up.